Hello, beautiful friends. This is the Organizer Advisor, and <laughs> what a weekend it has been. So, I took a couple of days and did my little um, kind of sanctuary soul trip. I went horseback riding on the beach, and I just took a couple of days, 48 whole hours, just to myself. No schedule, no plans, just kind of free-floating through um, northern Florida, or northwest Florida. So it was fun, and then I came back to technological tragedy. So um, I'm going to have to do some live videos until I figure out how to work around. You know, if you've been on my channel, you know that I am not a digital native. People in my generation generally aren't. Um, so uh, technology things are very frustrating to me. Fortunately, I have a tech son who can usually fix anything and he can just remotely handle my issues. However, um, about uh, six months ago in December, I bought a brand new computer with a great graphics card. I got a brand new camera. I got a brand new microphone and everything so that I can make better content for you all. And things were going along fine until something in the Windows program has shut down all of my devices. So my son fixed it, took me about three hours, um, last one day last week, and we were on the phone and he was remotely going in and trying to fix everything. Came back from my little vacay and it happened all over again after three hours of videotaping yesterday. So, of course, my frustration level went through the roof and I just decided I'm kind of over Windows. So, I ordered a MacBook and it will be here Wednesday. I'm hoping that is going to solve all my tech problems because when I have a tech issue, it just shuts everything down. So, I had a beautiful video made for you yesterday and it's no sound. It's all gone. So I'm going to try and muddle through, so please be patient with me. Um, this is all extremely <laughs> frustrating. And um, I called, I even called the company for tech support, and they don't have tech support in a tech company that manufactures computers. You have to send the computer in. So you could imagine how upset I was. Anyway, so we're going to carry on and muddle through because um, we can't allow the frustration to become barriers. So, and this is an important day because we're starting a room every nook and cranny clean. Now, when we clean a room, we don't like tear the room apart and then get halfway through cleaning and we have stuff piled all over and we get very frustrated and then we just say, I don't have time for this. And then we just kind of throw everything back. We forget where we put it. It becomes chaos. And then we get stressed out. That's not how we clean. Um, we use a framework. Everything for me is a framework because it keeps things manageable. So when we clean a room, especially when we're every nook and cranny cleaning, which really has a very uplifting effect, um, we clean and organize one wall at a time. I call it the compass row strategy because we start with the north wall, we move to the east wall, we do the south wall, and then we do the west wall. That gives us four days, but we're not totally entrenched. We, we put a barrier, some sort of a limit on what we're able to manage so that we don't tear everything apart and then you know, we forget about an appointment and then we have to leave in a hurry and then we just get very, very overwhelmed. I know this sounds familiar to a lot of you. So we minimize the overwhelm by adding a structure, which is one wall a day. Now we're gonna clean everything on that wall, but before we get started, we start with the ceiling. Why? Because the acoustical texture up there traps dust, pet hair, dander, and then you add in the kind of the cooking um, residue from 
cooking anything in grease or butter or um, that kind of locks those um, little pieces of debris together and they cling to the ceiling and then you turn your ceiling fan on and now you've just got dust swirling all over in your breathable air. We want to make our home as healthy as possible and this is particularly important for people who have uh, COPD, any kind of respiratory issue, asthma. So the, the more particulate matter we can get out of our home, the less we're going to breathe. So what we do is wear eye protection. I use like PPE eye protection. I have whole videos on the YouTube channel. Please go to YouTube, the organizer advisor. There's a playlist named every nook and cranny cleaning. It's going to take you through how to clean your baseboards, how to clean your ceiling fan, how to clean, um, how to start cleaning your room. I have clean with me videos there where you can literally just watch and clean with me one wall at a time. Um, I take you through the whole process. Now, I don't want to take the time to do this in these daily videos because you have a certain amount of time to watch and a certain amount of time to get busy. So, what I do is I use a very inexpensive broom that you can get at the dollar store. They're like $5. They're very soft nylon bristles. I put on a hat or a scarf and I put on my uh, eye protection because you don't want any of that particulate coming down into your eyes. And then I just gently sweep the ceiling. This is, you're going to see. Now, if you have electronics or fabrics that you want to cover, use a drop cloth or a sheet or something to cover. And then what I do is after I do that, I vacuum the floor or sweep the floor, and then I'm getting that particulate dust up. Then I clean the ceiling fan or the light fixture. Now, your ceiling fan blades, um, they attract a lot of dust. And when you are able to wipe those down, that's going to capture that particulate matter so it's not recirculated in your breathable air. Okay, so ceiling first, ceiling fan or light fixture, get all of the dust and debris off of that. Then we're gonna start on the north wall. Now, what do we do on the north wall? We pull everything away from the wall if you can do that safely. If you can pull everything away from the wall safely, um, then we're going to clean behind it. If you can't, we're going to use the microfiber wand. You're going to have all of that, um, all of those in the clean, uh, every nook and cranny clean playlist. It has everything you need, but I use a microfiber wand. You can get it at a Walmart or a discount store and then dust your wall. I take all the pictures off. I take everything off the wall, pull everything away from the wall, and then I dust the wall because again, a lot of your dust and particulate matter attaches itself to the texture of the wall. You'll be surprised. If you have curtains on the wall, I move the curtains. If you have, um, and then I throw them in the laundry while I'm working. If you have um, like a dresser or storage um, device on the wall, I try to move that away and then I can clean dust behind it I can clean the baseboards and whatever woodwork. So whatever you're gonna have on that wall, if you have a bed on that wall, you wanna take your linens off. It is Clean Sheet Sunday, so you can take your linens off, wash them, freshen your pillows, fluff them in the dryer with a dryer sheet. Um, you can wash all your bedding, wash your mattress pad, rotate your mattress. These are all the things that we do in the primary bedroom so that we create this clean, healthy, sanctuary space. So um, every storage device, I take all the drawers out. I actually bought um, an armoire off of Marketplace a long, long time ago. And when I pulled the drawer out, someone's birth certificate was in there. I was able to get that back to them. Um, so, you know, you may find some receipts or important documents that you put in the drawer and somehow or another it got behind the drawer. So I take all of the drawers out. I also hydrate the cabinetry. Now, there's a whole video on how to clean wood furniture, but this is Winston. He came to join me. Um, so you pull all that out. You hydrate that cabinetry in solid wood. You clean the drawers, you take everything out, you go through it, you organize it, and you put it all back in. I have videos on all of that too, but we're focusing on one wall. 
which is going to be the north wall. We start with the ceiling so that we get that done, kind of sweep up, vacuum, mop up the dust off the floor, maybe do a quick dusting before you start cleaning. Um, move everything away from the wall. You're going to clean underneath um, whatever furniture you have. You're going to clean the baseboards. You're going to clean whatever glass you have. If you have curtains on that wall, you wash the curtains, lampshades, lamps, check the cords to anything that's plugged in to make sure those cords are in good shape, especially if you've had a puppy in the kind of recent past, then those puppies tend to chew. So make sure those cords are in good shape. It's a, you know, a, a safe and healthy home. So we want to do as many added safety measures as possible. Speaking of, you want to have a smoke detector or carbon and carbon monoxide detector if applicable and you want to have a fire extinguisher in the primary bedroom. You want this space to be clutter free. You want it to be bright white lights. You want to have um, a restful, comfortable bed if you need to turn your mattress. Check your mattress. If your mattress isn't comfortable, you're not getting a restorative, healthy sleep. And that affects the way your body heals itself. So if that's something that we need to look at as investing in in the future, then that's a consideration at this time. Um, making sure your bedding is fresh, making sure everything feels good, make, making sure that when you s slide into bed at night, you're comfortable. Um, declutter your bedside table. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you see should be calm, not chaos. That sets the tone for your day. I also suggest that you put something on your bedside table that you're proud of something that makes you happy that's uplifting. Um, this could be a um, picture of you and your family. It could be an accomplishment. It could be a photograph of you graduating um, college or technical school or trade school. It could be um, the day you married your partner. Um, it could be something that reminds you of somebody that you um, love and are attached to. Um, I have a peacock light that reminds me of my mom. You could be a tassel from a graduation. Winston snoring, sorry. It could be um, a chip from, you know, any kind of program that you're working through to better your life. Uh, Alcoholics Anonym Anonymous chip. Um, whatever reminds you that you are becoming a better version of yourself every single day through this process. Okay, so that's kind of where I want to just start. We're going to do today, we're going to do the north wall. And then tomorrow on Monday, we're going to do the east wall. And then on Tuesday, we're going to do the south wall. And then on Wednesday, we're going to do the west wall and in four days we have cleaned a room every nook and cranny clean everything's been organized everything's been clean you know where everything is hi Donna thanks for watching mm -hmm. so this is going to give this space mm -hmm. a soul sanctuary feeling it gives you the opportunity to declutter an opportunity to touch everything that you have in that room and kind of assess your visceral reaction does it feel make you feel uplifted or does it make you feel uh, kind of like you want to avoid? If you get that feeling like this just doesn't jive with my vibe, that's something that creates an energy in that room. And if it doesn't create a positive energy, it's creating a negative energy. It makes you have a visceral reaction when you walk in that room, especially if it's something that's out and visible. You want everything in your environment to jive with your vibe to uplift you to make you feel good if you get that mm -mm, i don't really like that it's creating a dynamic and that dynamic is abrasive to your energy it gets you off kilter and it makes you feel unsettled that's not what your home is for okay so that's where we're going to start this week um sunday we're doing the primary bedroom this week. We've done the uh, primary bathroom and the um, second bathroom, finished those last week. 
So now we're gonna take the next four days, work at your own pace. And we're gonna start with the north wall, ceiling first, north wall, east wall on Monday, south wall on Tuesday, on Wednesday, we do the west wall. We're done, every nook and cranny clean. A major room in our house where we spend a lot of time to have restorative relaxation. So it's really important that this room feels good, looks good, smells good, and makes you have a very calm response physically and emotionally. Okay, so um, create the space to be something that reflects your authentic self. You, there are new rules. This is your home. It doesn't have to follow anybody else's framework. So, you know, think outside the box. This mirror, my mother bought back in the 1970s and it was in the barn for about 30 years. And she so much wanted me to have it when I bought this cottage. And so I did and I moved it all over the house. And then finally, when I was totally redoing this room, um, I just kind of leaned it against this wall and I thought, you know what? That would make a beautiful headboard. So it's extremely heavy. So with the help of my husband, we mounted it on the wall. It is a headboard, I love it. And it's right under the window where I have this leaded glass piece. And if you are new to my channel, you know this entire cottage uh, is all garage sale, thrift store, marketplace, um, even side of the road finds. Um, everything in this, pretty much everything in this house, the doors, <laughs> The, the furniture, everything in this house, I've gotten like for pennies. And you know, I think for this piece, I paid like $5 at a garage sale. My good friend Sandy Willard was with me when I bought it. I've had it for years, um, but it really kind of fits the, <laughs> Winston is snoring. Come here, buddy. Can you not snore? Thank you. Come over here and see everybody. Mm -hmm. That's a boy. Let's see if you can come over here. All right, there he is. Hi. Um, and the, the Frenchies share the bed with us, so there's all kinds of little Frenchy blankets that I put over the uh, bedspread so that they can get on the bed. He has stairs. Yeah, stop. Stop sorting. He has stairs so he can get up on the bed anytime he pleases. He loves it because it's memory foam. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going this week. That's our framework. Now, before I make this into a really substantially long video, um, another thing that you can do is while you're working, you can exercise. Home caring, you know, the cleaning, the physical activity of cleaning a home, you're actually burning quite a few calories. So you can make it um, even your workout routine. So you can get your little hand weights. I keep a little basket under the bed on rollers and I do my yoga right over here. And so I keep my weights there so I can just kind of work out with my weights, but as I'm cleaning, like every time I do something, like if I dust the ceiling, I stop and I can lift weights, just five minutes. And then when I dust the wall, I can stop. While I'm hydrating, I can lift weights. Um, you can also use your arm uh, weights and leg weights if you have those. So every time you move, when you're dusting the wall, you're actually doing some resistance exercising and that's gonna help you tone. So as we do this every nook and cranny cleaning, you can exercise at the same time. Put on some really uplifting music, upbeat music and clean to the beat. That helps. Make sure you're taking time to hydrate. That's gonna keep your energy up. Um, so, all right, enough about that. If you have questions, please drop them in the comments. Check out the YouTube channel. There are so many videos there on clean with me, how to clean, what you need to do in order to clean. What do you need to, how can you enhance your cleaning experience? Um, get your kids involved. So that's enough about cleaning for right now. Now, if you haven't written in your, um, all the things you love about your life journal. Today, I'm gonna write in my journal that I love my bed. I love the feel of this memory foam mattress. I love the feel of the clean linens. It's Clean Sheet Sunday, by the way. And I love the feeling of my pillow. So when I slip into bed at night and my my bedside table is decluttered, I, have a, I can put a vase of fresh flowers that I pick out of my garden. All of these things are uplifting to me, but it helps me really enjoy the experience. 
of my daily life. And that's what this whole process is about. I just want to enhance your happiness and help you transform your life, become a better version of yourself, bloom where you're planted, and really be able to embrace your happiness and the things that bring joy to you. Because when you're happy, those around you are happy. And when they're happy, those around them are happy. And if everybody was in a happier state, what a world we would be. And we can all do a little bit to help encourage that in others. So that's my mission. Now, speaking of Clean Sheet Sunday, we have our Sunday prep steps. And this just kind of helps us get prepared for the week. Um, we pick out our wardrobe. Now, remember, we're creating that rainbow closet. Um, and so last week we worked on the reds, pinks, oranges, and yellows. We pulled all of those colors from our garments in our closet. We put them front and center, right in the center of the closet or on a garment rack. And we then started going through them, wearing them. Did they make us feel fabulous? Were they in ready to wear condition? Were, was there something that needed to be mended or fixed? Did those darn zippers work? Now, another tip is while you're going through, if you paint your buttons with clear nail polish. You'll find that in the every nook and cranny or the um, rainbow closet wardrobe restructuring playlist on the YouTube channel. If you paint your buttons, they stay on longer. It just helps to keep those threads from unraveling. Okay, so as we're going through our wardrobe, our color this week is going to be greens and blues. So we're gonna pull the greens and the blues. So this is light green to dark blue, and we're gonna put them front and center in our wardrobe. We're gonna get all of our accessories, our jewelry, our hats, scarves, purses, shoes, and we're going to start to wear these systematically. If they look a little tattered or faded or something's just not right about it, it needs to go, okay? So greens and blues this week, I encourage you to do this with your children's clothing too. If you create the rainbow closet in their closet, it is going to help prepare for school because you're gonna know what they have. We, um, when I work with my grandson on organizing, I just hold up a garment and say yes or no. If it, uh, the kids know, they know what they like and what they're gonna wear. If they're not gonna wear it, it's just clutter. If it's something that they want to keep, make sure it's laundered in good wearable condition in the closet where they can find it so that they can reduce their getting dressed stress too, but you also know what you need to buy before school starts. Okay, so greens and blues, your closet, kids' closet. As we work on our closet, creating the rainbow closet to reduce our getting dressed stress, we're going to work on our kids' closets too because the last week when we finish all of our every nook and cranny cleaning, we're gonna get our kids ready for school. We're gonna get them organized. We're gonna get their backpacks ready, their closet ready, because those are the big battles when it comes to preparation for school. Okay, so wardrobe, prep step. Just pull out your colors. You can start putting together some um, uh, outfits, make them dynamic, you know, express your authentic self. You're gonna feel confident and enhances your self-esteem. All right, plan your menu. This is going to help you reduce that dinner stress when everybody's cranky, everybody's tired. If you don't have a plan, you're gonna either go out to dinner, call Grubhub or DoorDash, and then, or you're gonna get grab and go food. Um, and that's all fine. But if you wanna save money, that's not the way. The best way to cook um, is to have healthy meals planned Prepare if you can and have all the ingredients on hand. That way you can use coupons, you're not paying tips, and you're utilizing ingredients that you have in your, your pantry and your refrigerator and freezer. So just do a quick check. Hey, I have some tomatoes to use. I think I'm gonna do maybe spaghetti or I'm gonna do um, a caprese salad or I'm gonna make um, maybe some um, more uh, like a Mexican meatloaf but when you utilize the food that you have, you save money. And right now with the prices of food, it's so important that we not waste money or food. 
Okay, we also you get our coupons out. We use those store fly flyers and digital coupons. You can check the playlist on document organization. There's a whole video on my best advice on how to maximize your coupon savings. Get those store loyalty cards and when you plan your ingredient menu and you write your ingredient list, see if you have coupons. Also, this is gonna help you focus on eating clean and not eating a lot of toxic food because you're able to control kind of the ingredients that you put in your food, the amount of salt that you put in your food. And so that's gonna have some really positive health implications. We get our grab and go binder. If you don't know what a grab and go binder is, it is a great strategy. I have a video in the playlist on the YouTube channel. That's gonna tell you how to use this strategy effectively, but it's basically whatever you need when you're out running errands. It's gonna have your claim tickets for your dry cleaning. It's gonna have your receipts if you need to return something. It's gonna have your event tickets, your prescriptions. Everything is housed in there so that you grab it and go and you got everything you need to run your errands. No more frustration with forgetting. Okay, clean sheet Sunday. We always change our bed sheets on Sunday. This gives us a nice fresh start. You like shower, it's Sunday evening, have a glass of wine, light a candle, relax. But then when you slip into those soft sheets and your bed smells fresh and your pillows are fresh, it just helps you get a restorative night's sleep, which enhances your health because that's when your body repairs itself. Okay, so declutter your bedside table. Um, this is where we wanna wake up. The first thing we see, of course, what we do is we pick up our phone, but the first thing we see is something calm and serene and uplifting. Make it beautiful. Put some fresh flowers by your bedside table. Put something that uh, makes you, and I just talked about that earlier, Put something on your bedside table that makes you makes you motivated, that encourages you every day. Something you've accomplished or something that you love, something you're connected to, so that your first thing you see in the morning is something that uplifts you. That's so important, setting the tone for your day. Okay, so clean out your purse. How many times do we start our week with a purse that is overstuffed, over overweight, and we can't find what we need, and then we go to try and find our keys and they're nowhere to be found. And that starts a week off in a really low vibration energy, and it's just fraught with frustration. So if we prep our purse before we start our work week, we know where our keys are, we know where our credit cards are, we know that we have everything that we need, so that we're not in that frantic frustration. And then if you take vitamins and supplements, this is a great time to just go ahead and get all of those out, put them in little compartments. You can use pill organizers, you can use condiment cups, but you can put them in there, get them organized. You can do your medications as well if you need to, but this is going to save you a lot of time so you're not spending gobs of time opening all those bottles. And then clean your makeup brushes. Remember, we like to do this on Sunday so that we don't put a lot of bacteria on our skin, keeps our skin healthier, makes our face look fresher, and we are, um, it's just more hygienic for our skin. So let's recap. I know this was a long video and I didn't mean it to be this long, but we are gonna start in the primary bedroom, every nook and cranny cleaning and organizing. We're gonna start with the ceiling, clean the light fixture or ceiling fan, and then we're gonna work on the north wall only. Don't overwhelm yourself. North wall, if you don't have a lot of stuff on the north wall, good, you have some time. If you have a lot of stuff, you may need to extend it into two days. We have an extra day built into the week before Tidy Friday. So if you need to take an extra day on one wall, it's there. So Sunday is the north wall, Tuesday, Monday is the east wall, Tuesday is the south wall, Wednesday is the west wall. That's curtains, bedding, flooring, baseboards, windows, mirrors, uh, cabinetry, drawers, everything clean, but only one wall a day. Then our color for the week is 
green. We're creating this rainbow closet so that we have a highly structured wardrobe of ready to wear garments that reduces the getting dressed stress. Greens and blues, I'm sorry. So get all of your accessories, all of your greens and blues, put them front and center in your closet and start to systematically go through them. Then we're gonna do our Sunday prep steps in order to prepare for the week. I know it seems like a lot today, but you can extend it over a couple of days if you need to. All right, I think and make sure you're hydrating and write in your what you love about your life journal so that we have a collection of things that can help us feel really positive when we get hit with a bunch of negative energy. Okay, friends, that is the video for today. I'm going to download this and put it on the YouTube channel, but please visit the channel because that's where everything's organized and archived. And until tomorrow, when we work on the uh, east wall, have fun on that north wall. If you have questions, pop them down in the comment section. I can answer them. You can always message me if you get stuck. And until tomorrow, Thanks for, with your pa thanks for your patience with my technology tragedies. And we'll get things straightened around when I get my new computer in. Love you all. Have a wonderful day.